It's World Environment Day tomorrow, and often plastic is at the forefront of efforts to clean up the planet. It clogs our landfills, reaching all the way into the ocean, and when burnt, it produces toxic smoke, making it one of the biggest threats to the environment. In South Africa, numerous efforts have been made through policy interventions to minimize the use of plastic. But looking at the widespread pollution across the length and breadth of the country, it is clear more needs to be done. Now, for more on this, I'm joined by international climate activist Catherine Constantinidis, SA Plastic Pacts and an analyst, excuse me, Rowan Sneyman, and Lauren de Kock from the World Wide Fund for Nature. Good evening to all of you. Thank you very much for joining us. Lauren, I'm going to start with you. The theme for this year's uh, World Environment Day is Beat Plastic Pollution. I think let's zoom in on the issue and first talk about how bad the situation is. Well, globally, it's been highlighted as a as a very urgent issue to to address. Um, we have thousands of tons of plastic pollution reaching the oceans every day, um, and, and this is from research that that is is coming out um, every year, um, highlighting the the impact of of plastic pollution. But even in South Africa. We have um, a very high leakage rate of, of plastic pollution into our oceans. Um, and it's not only our oceans, it's our freshwater catchments, it's our uh, landscapes, um, as well as our air that we breathe, because a lot of the plastic um, that becomes waste is burnt in South Africa. Hmm. And Rowan, I, I was reading a, a release online and it stated that over 400 million tons of plastic waste is created every single year, a huge issue that needs focus, clearly. Yes, of course, it's a it's a global problem, um, but in in South Africa, especially so as well. Um, so on average, uh, every South African um, uses around or produces around 41 kilograms um, of, of uh, packaging waste per year, which is higher than the global average. Um, so, of course, there's, there's a significant amount of work that needs to be done uh, to address this issue. Um, but luckily, there are initiatives underway that that's trying to, to tackle this complex problem and trying to move towards a, a solution. Mm -hmm. And Catherine, you recently traveled to France uh, to attend the Global Change Now Summit. Was plastic pollution one of the main talking points there? What was really interesting to see is that it wasn't just plastic that was a talk of discussion. There, it was a bit more forward thinking in the sense that it was about solutions that are actually happening around the world, mm -hmm. things that are taking place, recycling opportunities that exist in different pockets throughout the world that are actually seeing impact and change. And it was really about a shift of mindset around use, the use of packaging. Mm -hmm. And one thing we have to remember is that plastics don't litter, people do. Yeah. And so changing the behavior of people around their engagement with packaging is of crucial importance. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, the theme of sustainability, when we look at the circular economy, these are things that are really important. And brands need to be responsible. And I think that big corporates need to start to take a lot more responsibility for what is going on because of the products that they put on shelves. Definitely. I'm interested to hear about some of the solutions that were brought forward during those discussions. Did they give you hope? I think that a lot of the exposure that I had to some of the brands that were there, some of the projects that are actually happening, it was really impressive. The only thing it did give me hope, what it did remind me and show me though, is that unfortunately South Africa is still far behind. There are organizations and companies such as Moet and Chandon who has actually gone and looked at their packaging, looked at the weight of their bottles. Yes, they are in glass, but they are doing what they can with their brand. There are many other examples of people who are doing extensive work but I looked at this company specifically, understood the Natura Nostra sustainability program and was able to see how the impact of sustainability is right from the top, right down mm -hmm. to the farmer on the vineyards who is actually producing the grapes, who understands fundamentally that if we don't take care of this planet, there is not going to be a beautiful planet for us to all thrive from. That's the unfortunate re reality. Absolutely. And Lauren, let me come to you. Now, as South Africans, we've obviously seen small changes being implemented, like paying for plastic bags, restaurants using non-plastic straws and moving to um, biodegradable straws. But clearly this is not enough. What else needs to be done? Where do we start? I think Catherine raised a very important point where there needs to be accountability across the life cycle of plastics. And that goes right upstream to the petrochemical industry who actually produce 
the plastic that we see every day. Uh, and then it also goes down to the um, manufacturers of plastic products, be it packaging, uh, be it toys, be it um, uh, sanitary products. I mean, plastics is all around us. And then, of course, to the brands and the retailers. There needs to be accountability and transparency and reporting of what is produced and how can we um, not only in South Africa, but also globally, tackle um, the, the problem of plastic pollution also from an upstream and a midstream perspective. So in, in South Africa, definitely policy is required. We, we do have policy which um, has will keeps the producers of um, plastic products accountable for the end of life. Um, that's financially or operationally to, to ensure that the end of life is properly managed of these plastic products. But you also have... Um, the, the actions of businesses, and, and Catherine did speak about it, and of course, Ruan at the South African Plastics Pact, so they have very progressive um, initiatives and, and of, of course, time-bound commitments being made by um, the producers within the plastics value chain to ensure that um, plastics do not become waste and are circulated in the economy. Hmm. Ruan, let me come to you. You are part of Plastic Packs. Just talk to us about what the initiative does and also maybe discuss some of the root causes of plastic pollution. Okay, great. So, so the South African Plastics Pact is an initiative of some of the largest uh, companies in South Africa. So including the, the brand owners, the, the retailers, um, there's recyclers and packaging converters. So it's really a wide array of different organ organizations. Uh, and our approach is to, to take a value chain um, uh, perspective to try and address uh, all, the, all the different points in the value chain where there are problems that ultimately cause plastic pollution in the environment. Uh, so the Plastics Pact is driven by four very ambitious time-bound targets, and the objective is to move beyond just um, compliance with the regulations. It's to try and build real momentum within these corporates uh, so that the, the necessary actions can be taken to ultimately move towards a, a circular economy for plastic packaging um, in South Africa. All well, the targets, the, 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 the deadline to, that the companies are aiming for is 2025. And of course, there's a lot of work that still needs to be done. So what we try and do is we work directly with these organizations and we also try and um, create a collective approach. So where the different companies can learn from each other. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's really valuable um, to have that type of information that the companies can use and share and, and just ultimately address some of these problems in a collective way. I see. Catherine, you engage and work with a lot of young people. Talk to us about the recycling culture that you are seeing or not seeing, because stats suggest that less than 10% of that 400 million tons of plastic waste are recycled every year. That is minute. Mm. So are young people getting involved? Are, are they not interested? What needs to happen? I think there are two things here. Through both the Miss Earth South Africa program and Generation Earth, we have seen how cleaning up the environment is used as punishment in schools. Oh. We tell children, oh, well, Interesting. You, you haven't done homework at break or after school, you need to go around and you need to clean up the school. Now we're giving cleaning up a negative connotation. Instead of making children proud to have a clean school, a beautiful environment, a clean community. So that, that shift of mindset has to happen. And through the programs that we do, we do extensive education on Firstly, building a pride around a clean environment. Mm. Tomorrow, we'll be in Orange Farm at Matewane Combined School. We'll be doing a cleanup as well as a tree planting and getting children actively involved in that. But it takes a great deal of co constant commitment, constant deliberate effort to take children on that journey with mm. us because children are consuming as much as adults. So many different items carry plastic. So much of our lives, as Lauren said, is actually consumed by plastic. And single-use single single items. Single-use plastic, yeah. absolutely. And we need to now shift that mindset completely, yeah. change behavior. And the best way to do it is to do it in action and take children on that journey. Show them that even if we've got a plastic bag, we can give it a new life several times. We can use our old yoga tub to actually pour paint and, and uh, use it at school. There are so many ways that we can recycle, reuse, and these are things that we have to teach, as well as respect. Respect for ourselves and respect for the environment. If children are taught that cleaning up is a punishment, they're not going to be able to thrive and create an environment where they're proud of a clean surrounding. Yeah, definitely. Laura, let me come back to you. Where do we then start 
and how do we start putting pressure on ourselves, on government and the private sector then to scale up and, and speed up these various initiatives? How do we have that conversation? How do we start it? I think that's a very important point. Um, consumer behavior is only one part of a very big systemic complex problem that we're facing. Mm -hmm. And the biggest leverage in the system is private sector and government. They have the most power to change the system. And first and foremost, um, if you look at the um, plastics treaty that's under negotiation at the United Nations at yeah. the moment, very similar to um, the climate um, space, is uh, they're looking at interventions across the value chain. And the priority is really on reducing production and consumption of plastics. And I mean, that looks at bans and um, phase outs of problematic and unnecessary products. Um, but it also looks at um, economic incentives, um, regulation. We, we do have some regulation in South Africa, but do we have enough? Um, the momentum around making a difference in the private sector business practices, introducing more reusable packaging, reducing the amount of plastic packaging on the shelves, for example. Um, I, still, I, th I still think a lot more needs to be done in that space. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it, it's not just about what to do with the plastic once it becomes uh, waste. It's about what can we do upstream and value change to change the system um, so that it doesn't become waste. Um, I think we really need to start focusing there. Hmm. And Ruan, I think plastic bags are a huge contributor and uh, grocery chains are probably one of the biggest contributors. You worked for a bi very big um, grocery chain. Was this part of the discussions? Did you see implementation happening during that time and space? Um, yes, definitely. So um, as, as one of the, the packaging items that, that retailers use, uh, a plastic bag would be one of the, the highest used items um, by the organization. Mm -hmm. And of course, there's various different uh, initiatives that a retailer can implement to, to reduce that. You would have seen, for example, from, from Woolworths that um, for, for many of their stores, they require um, customers to use a reusable bag instead of a plastic bag. Uh, of course, from a retail perspective, they really have to evaluate the different types of customers that they have. It's not always possible to, uh, to to move completely away from plastic bags uh, plastic bags for a retailer just because of the affordability of, of the alternatives. It might make it prohibitive, prohibitively expensive for their customers um, uh, to, to to have to purchase a more expensive bag with every shop. Uh, but of course, as Lauren said, just to agree with her, um, there's a lot that that companies can do, that brand owners and retailers can do really shift uh, the momentum towards addressing this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we always need to wait for policy. Um, uh, policy is obviously fundamentally important, but the private sector can definitely play a big role in, in, in driving this in the right direction and addressing the impacts they have, uh, eliminating where, where plastic and packaging is not necessary and replacing it with suitable alternatives where it makes sense from an environmental perspective, but then obviously also designing packaging with circularity in mind. So ultimately, we want to move towards a world where, where packaging can be circulated, where it can be reused as much as possible, and where the environmental impact of those materials are, are mitigated and that we don't see all that pollution in our environment. Definitely, we hope to achieve that. Catherine, um, private sector and businesses obviously have a huge role to play. You were fortunate enough to visit uh, the Moet et Chandon uh, Champagne House on your travels to Paris. I know that they uh, use glass. But what was the conversations like? I know that they've implemented a program as well. Just talk to us about what they're trying to do. Absolutely. The Natura Nostra program is unbelievable in the sense that it really has looked at sustainability and biodiversity to its core. Not only are they trying to put together an 100-kilometer ecological corridor to safeguard and protect the valley, but they're also looking at how do they make sure that environmental issues, issues of biodiversity matter to everyone within that business and within that value chain of their entire industry. And when I got to walk through the vineyards, speak with the farmers, uh, you, when you stand there and you see how natural the natural wilderness has come back. You see wildflowers and bumblebees and it's beautiful to actually see that when they start to remove the human intervention um, as much as possible, 
nature starts to take over naturally. And, you know, there are so many small things that they have done, making sure that their glass bottle is much lighter. They will start to remove the actual famous packaging that we know, uh, their beautiful boxes. That is also being re-looked at. They're looking at all the ways that they can also remove packaging from their brand and make sure that they are right from the picking of the grapes, the growing of the grapes, right through to when we see that final product on a shelf. Mm -hmm. They have taken every measure to be as sustainable as possible. They're looking at, um, you know, regenerative agriculture as part of their system. And when you see sustainability and biodiversity in action in the way that you do in that valley, by such a huge global iconic brand, you realize that it is possible for anyone to actually put in the effort to look at how we actually have less of an impact on the beautiful earth we call home. 100%. Uh, uh, Roan, let me come back to you. And you touched on policy and government in intervention. Uh, I read that a few ministers will be launching World Environment Day tomorrow and they will be visiting various recycling plants. What, what kind of support needs to be implemented here? Support and policy. From a policy perspective, South Africa already has extended producer responsibility regulations. Um, so those regulations play a very important role in, in supporting uh, recycling and just uh, generating um, uh, investments into the, the collection and recycling of, of plastic and packaging materials. Um, so the EPR regulations already lay a very good foundation uh, for, for the development of a circular economy for plastics in the future. So it's really, it's a, it's a great place for us to build from. It won't necessarily uh, address all the problems that there are, uh, but it's just a, a good place to ensure that, uh, that brands and retailers and packaging manufacturers are taking more accountability uh, to a certain extent because it's required by, by the regulations. Uh, but of course, that's, as, as I said, that's just the foundation. Mm -hmm. From there, a lot of work still needs to be done um, to actually address the problem. And that's where initiatives like the South African Plastics Pact comes in uh, just to ensure that we we are always being more ambitious than only uh, complying with the regulations. And then also referring to the UN treaty that, that Lauren mentioned um, earlier, uh, that, that's going to be very important and we would have to just keep an eye on, on the way in which that develops and, and how South Africa engages mm. uh, in that regard. Lauren, realistically, I mean, the theme is extremely ambitious, beat plastic waste. Realistically, uh, how far would you say we are from achieving this? It's difficult to say. Um, at this stage, with the current um, initiatives, um, commitments from the private sector, and even policy in place, not only in South Africa, but globally, I think it is a very small dent in a very big wave of plastic um, that's still entering our environment and also impacting um, the health of the environment, but also our health. Um, and what we, what we need and what the research is saying is we need a systems intervention or it's, it's, it's called an optimal system scenario where you have um, reduction and substitution primarily. Um, then you would have um, collection um, and recycling mm -hmm. um, and then um, proper disposal will be one. Um, and also just to clean up the legacy plastic pollution because there are millions and millions of tons of plastic in the environment yeah. um, that also need to be also needs to be collected and brought back um, and disposed of correctly in in a sound way. Um, so currently we still have a long way to go, I think. Yeah. Um, and I think the UN treaty is is a good way of um, providing guidance to many countries um, through global obligations and control measures uh, to try and get the ball rolling. But again, it, it's a we need interventions from every stakeholder in, in the life cycle of plastic at a global level, but also in South Africa. Definitely. Catherine, still a long way to go, but tomorrow is World Environment, Environment Day. Talk to us quickly, because yeah, we need to, <laughs> to wrap, but talk to us quickly about how we can contribute in our small capacity at home, uh, in our communities. What can we do tomorrow to commemorate uh, World Environment Day? 
I definitely think that tomorrow is an opportunity for everyone to look at one small thing that they can do in the long term. So, for example, if you don't recycle at home, start one, take one waste stream, be it plastic, be it paper, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. but start to recycle. Start to look at the items that you have in your home that land up in the bin that could be reused, recycled. Let us start to make habits, good habits, that really add value to the environment around us. I think that tomorrow is an opportunity for us to have these kinds of difficult conversations in our office spaces. Let us look at how we, we dispose of waste. What kind of recycle systems do we have that we could extend to our employees, yeah. that they could bring waste because we don't have the waste systems that we require within our metros. So perhaps we can offer that, that as a service to the employees in our office blocks or in our, uh, you know, in our own spaces. But I really think tomorrow is an opportunity Opportunity for us to make small goals uh -huh. that we can achieve. Exactly. Don't try and do big things. And I want to say that anyone who can't see the plastic pollution and the waste crisis that we have in the city of Johannesburg, drive past any of the big landfills, and if you can just take in that smell, you realize that there's a crisis and we have reached capacity with our landfills as well. We have to all do something. And waste stops with me. Uh -huh. It's a personal action. Each of us has to take responsibility. 100%. Very interesting conversation and a huge issue that I really wanted to shine the spotlight on this evening. I want to thank all of my guests, Lauren, Rowan and Catherine. Thank you very much for your time and for your insights. I really appreciate that. Well, that was climate activist Catherine Constantinides, SA Plastic Pact, and analyst Roan Sneeman, and Lauren de Kock from the Worldwide Fund for Nature. Tomorrow is World Environment Day. What are you going to be doing to play your part?